reasons unknown, Wipeout Tracks are a dime a dozen on Track Central. I've already covered at least two of them in the history of Tets. This is bonus Tets you're watching right now. But while tracks like this one are great, a lot of them are a little too lenient. This one being a great example of that. I'm able to smash my head against certain obstacles and it doesn't register as a crash. So I wouldn't want a donkey something like this. The whole point of will a donkey is, well, in some cases, it's to see how many times I can crash before I fucking lose my shit. At least that's how I picture you guys feel about it. For me, it's all about how much fun, if that's what you want to call it, I have trying to complete a certain track. So sometimes I could do it in less than 100 takes. Sometimes it takes me two to 3,000. But if a track is good enough or a fucking asshole enough, then we put it on the show. And while Wipeout Inspired tracks have no problem being huge dicks, sometimes creators take it a little too fucking far. So everything started out just fine, right? It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. The atmosphere is great. We're on the beach. There's water running. And it's just like, you feel like you're just, you're out on, on a vacation. Kind of just throwing your face into random objects just because it's relaxing. I mean, it's not like this is an unusual thing to do when you're on the donkey, right? I mean, look, the best part about this track is I could break it down obstacle by obstacle, okay? So, obstacle one, you come down the slide, you have zero control over your bike other than leaning. You can't slow down, you can't stop, the water is pushing you. And when you get to the bottom, you have to kind of lean a little bit, try to adjust your, I guess, your bounce, right? Because so, you want to hit something just right, because everything moves, everything fucking moves in this thing, because it's all floating. So you want to hit it just right, and even then, you might still put your face in the dirt. But this isn't even, this isn't even that big of a deal. It's not. I, I'm gonna make it over this, right? Right here, okay? We're not even to the good part. And the good part, in some cases, isn't even the fucking obstacles. But you'll see why in a minute. This obstacle is a fucking dick. I tried every trick to figure out, the timing is almost impossible. You almost just have to say fuck it and just gun it and just hope you make it across. I tried doing the donkey wheelie trick. It didn't work. I tried going nice and slow. It didn't work. Nothing fucking worked. And it's not even like, I didn't even put like a hundred volts on this obstacle, right? It's because the timing is so fucking hard to nail. You just, you have no choice but to resort to just gunning it. But like I said, it's not even about the obstacle. Mm -mm. I mean, yeah, it's a dick. Totally. Yeah, And every obstacle is a huge dick. But check this out. I, I fucking nailed this. Look at this. I'm a fucking beast. Obviously, it's time to fucking rage, right? But this guy thought of that too. You can't even fucking rage your way through this thing because you can't fucking stop. You get to the end and you have, know, god damn it. You get to the end and you have to like, you have to somehow manage to slow down. So you can't fucking speed through it. You have to take your time. Notice the stop sign, how the shit fucking pops up when you're halfway through. I didn't see it. It wasn't there because I was not, I was going too fast. So kudos to the creator, you're an asshole. And that was only obstacle two. Now, obstacle three, a little bit easier than the other ones, all right? The, the trick here is actually pretty easy. Fuck. You can't back up, by the way. FYI, in case you were fucking wondering. But the trick here is to skip as many of the red bars as you can. That's it. You hit the red bars, they trigger the blue bars. If you make it over, then you could fairly easily make it to the end. Obstacle four is a bit more of a pain in the ass. We have these discs that rotate, and all you have to do is just kind of sync it up so that your bike could slide right through the middle of all of them. And then you fuck. Obstacle four is a bit more of a pain in the ass. We have these discs that rotate. And all you have to do is just kind of sync it up so your bike could slide right through the middle of all of them. Then you're gonna stop at the stop sign. No, oh, look at that. Oh, almost got me, buddy. See? Could have swore that wasn't there before. But anyways, just keep making your way through. These are fairly easy to line up, right? Again, a pain in the ass, because when you get caught, you fucking explode, right? Uh, and then we squeeze right through. And then, oh, stop sign out of nowhere, see? That stops, I feel like that stop sign was a little bit late. It's almost like it came up late on purpose. Obstacle 5 is designed almost like by the creators of Wipeout and MXC themselves. Like, for some reason, and if those of you guys watch these shows know this, they enjoy these pistons that violently throw people up into the air. And usually that's not enough, which is why we need a crossbar spinning around to kind of add to it. But after a sick ninja save, uh, obstacle five really wasn't that big of a deal. Notice how I'm stopping, right? Where's the fucking stop sign? It's not there, okay. All right, we'll move on. Even obstacle six was not that big of a deal. I could see how it could be hard, but you know, I'm kind of the donkey master. You know, I kinda, kinda got this. Cautiously cross over, ah, uh, see? See that shit, fucker? Obstacle seven scares me a little bit because this is the checkpoint in the middle of the obstacle, right? And, and this isn't the only one. Look, there's another one right there to the right. So there's clearly something coming up that's gonna rustle my jimmies a little bit. 
So give it a little second here, make this jump right, yeah, see? See, I have timing, you know, I can do this stuff. And then I see, here it is, this is, this is what two checkpoints were necessary for, this. Now on one hand, I can see why putting two checkpoints up would make sense, because you have two of these spinning obstacles here, and some people just, for some reason, they cannot fucking perceive depth in a 2.5D game. But it's honestly not that difficult, right? Gonna slowly make our way through. It only took, what, 10 faults, 11 faults, it's not a big deal. Okay, uh, there we go, and then, oh, ha, 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 dude's getting a little too predictable in my opinion. Yeah, there's some that don't have anything, but so what? I'm still stopping at the end of every fucking one of these. I was going, AIDS! Fucking getting through these things. Not that hard. It, it's a pain in the ass, yes, but it's more, it's more of a patience thing, right? Like how much patience and a little bit of balance. You just have to kind of keep yourself from leaning in the wrong direction when this thing's coming up to stick in your bum. So you just kind of take it slow. There we go. Wait for the, wait for it, see? If, if I was greedy, I'd go for it. It'd probably throw me off to the fucking, to who, onto the beach where the chairs are and shit. No problem, see? This one's cake, this one's total cake. And then, oh, slow down. Ah, okay, cool. Obstacle number nine. Surprisingly not that hard. Really, it's all about keeping your bike in the right position on the platform. You wanna make sure that you have enough of an incline there so you can make it to the next platform. So lean back a little bit, so then you can make the next jump. Right, Cake, look, there's a checkpoint right there. Beep, right, oh, leaning too far forward, gonna try to make this jump here. Now, here, I make a mistake, watch. A little too fast, overshot the target. No pro two, two freaking faults, three faults spent on this obstacle so far. It's obviously, uh, yeah, no, it's cake. So just, it's it's go up, jump off, land the next platform, do it all again, right? Lather, rinse, repeat. Now here's the thing with trials. Whenever you're really focused, if something fucks you up, even if it's the easiest thing to do, you've already done it once, it gets fucking hard to do it again because now you're flustered. Now you're bothered by it. Now you wanna punch someone in the face. But just remember to stop at stop signs, even if they're not fucking there the first time, and you'll be okay. Make this jump. Now we're fine. Fuck it, A. Obstacle number 10. The big balls. Everybody loves big balls. Now, right off the bat, I know that I could do this obstacle, okay? But I'm looking at the end. How fast I want to be going when I come off that last ball. See that big feel right there? It's a fucking perfect place for a surprise butt sex giant piston, right? So I decide to just kind of take a look. Mm-hmm. Now you could call that cheating, but I'm okay with it. I, in my opinion, I am just taking preventative measures. Nobody likes surprise butt sex. So of course you're gonna take the necessary steps to protect yourself. Now, obstacle number 11. These tabletops, they don't move very fast. So if you lean on one side versus the other, it doesn't just switch right away. So it kind of throws you off at first. You have to kind of get used to it. It's almost like they're in water or something. In this case, they're not, obviously. But uh, Squishy tells me that there's a way that, that the, the creators can actually modify the amount of friction, I guess you could say. It's like resistance to actually create this kind of a neat little, you know, tilt effect. Which actually makes it, I would say, a little bit harder. Because if it was faster, then I would just nail it once, jump off to the next one and just keep moving. But in this case, they're fucking slow and annoying and you sit there on each one for like five seconds. So you end up kind of psyching yourself out. But overall, this is not necessarily a difficult obstacle. Even the next half of it, you notice there's a checkpoint here. Even the next half of it is actually not that hard. You hit the red ones and it basically flips up and you just kind of ride it that way. The goal obviously in this one is to kind of not hit on the red side, hit more on the blue side because this happens. But overall, not that difficult, okay? You just basically hit these, you make it to the end, and then notice I'm not very cautious here. Thankfully, there was nothing here this time, which obviously means the next time is gonna be one. But we're already at obstacle 12. We open up with a cannonball. Now, I'll be honest, this obstacle kind of kicked my ass. I logged about 25 or so faults, and it was like just to the halfway point. Now, I know better than anybody that 25 faults is not a lot, but the difference between faults in this track and faults in anywhere else is that these ones are fucking humiliating. Now, do you guys see what I'm saying? But I like to think that I thrive off this stuff, so I keep going, right? And notice the big red thing at the top? You couldn't fucking miss it that time. You see how long it took for the stop sign to come up? Fucking dicks. Look at this shit. Look at this shit, they fucking hand off to each other. The timing on the second half of Obstacle 12 is, is not that difficult, really. Uh, you just kinda gotta 
watch out for an opening like right here. Give it a little bit of juice and then wait. Be patient. You have to be fucking patient. If you're not, you're gonna eat it. And that's just the way it fuck it is in this thing. So here we go. Look at that. Perfect. Fucking perfect. And then of course, stop sign, right? Look at in the butt. It's up. Fucking. Son of a fucking bitch. Fuck. <laughs> Now look, yes, we have to do the whole fucking obstacle again. Now look at these fucking shit-eating grins on these stop signs. Look at them, look at them! Just fuck, they're like, oh, stop! Stop, there's a bar coming! Yeah, fuck you, stop sign. Fucking prick. We're gonna move on to number 13. And remember what I said about humiliation? I'm telling you, it is everywhere in this fucking track. Every fucking where. Yeah, these things are a bit more of a pain in the ass. The ones that move back and forth here. Makes it, you have to time it just right. Oh, by the way, those things are back. Oh, by the way, those things are back. But 13 wasn't that difficult once you get the timing down. Once you know exactly when to go. Like, you go right here. You don't go when it's facing you, right? And look at look at these things. I know people that dance like this. And I'm pretty sure I'm probably not the only one. But seriously, this track fucking broke me in 20 minutes. I, I cannot believe, like... I was, I went into this thing, I knew it was hard, right? When I was first shown this track, I knew it was difficult. And I was just like, you know what? I could do this fucking track. Like, it might take me a full, a, a handful of takes. Look at it, look at this, see? See? Dick. But anyways, I thought that it was gonna be harder, where it would actually take me, you know, 500 plus tries, or fucking an hour and a half, or some bullshit. And what's funny is, here's, I'm actually recording next week's episode right now. I already have two and a half hours of footage and I plan on getting more, but this track, fuck, it just, it, I just could not believe, by the end of this, like this right here, this, I, I ditched the donkey, I'm like, okay, oh, it, it, it will donkey, all I have to do is just make it to the end of using this rope thing. I, I am just like so over, I'm waiting for a giant fucking sweeper arm to come out of the sky, out of the heavens, and just swat me out of the way, but it didn't happen, and it's funny, it's like, part of me, I'm so conditioned, to the surprise butt sex piston thing that I figured one more time wouldn't be so bad. 